Keeping venomous reptiles is an unforgiving hobby, requiring proper training and lots of experience. One simple mistake can be the difference between life and death. death, death. Remember, the most venomous snake in the world oh, is the whoa. one that just bit you. There are no venomous snakes with training wheels. Just because you see Viper Keeper handle snakes a certain way does not mean you should try it too. This young lady has come back uh, to visit. And she was being reared by a friend for a while. This is uh, a South African captive born and bred uh, Black Mamba and Dend Dendroaspis polylepis. And she's grown quite a bit since she's uh, uh, been away. And uh, actually, uh, this is just probably a temporary quarters uh, for her because she really needs uh, uh, probably a Vision uh, 221, which is 28 inches wide. Uh, 20 deep and 14 high I think uh, she won't be able to uh, to have a tree in there so easy you know a lot of people don't realize that uh, black mambas like trees and are very happy when they're off the ground uh, although she'll when the lights are off she'll lay in the back but she'll bask up here in the uh, in the treetops so she's a uh, She's a pretty good girl. Uh, she was being used to uh, to train some uh, snake keepers at the National Zoo in Washington D.C. because she's a a very laid back snake. But uh, everyone was able to handle her on on a single or a double hook, uh, no problem whatsoever. I'm trying to teach uh, zookeepers that they don't have to be quite so uh, frightened and worried when working uh, some of these snakes. Uh, try to keep with the philosophy is if you don't scare them, they won't scare you. So they've been working with Buzzard too, and Buzzard is pretty easy going. They've got a a confiscation there that's essentially in solitary confinement which isn't really good for a king cobra uh, because they're highly intelligent to isolate the animal from uh, people and everybody uh, is not good but mm, they don't really have people who handle col big cobras like that uh, you know and he is a handful and again because of many stupid provisions uh, you know I'm not allowed to take the animal on loan and work with them and get him all calmed down and and to the point where he can become a good display animal you know bureaucracy you know some rules and regulations are just uh, just not well thought of and uh, just not so good so she's a, she's a real good girl. Let's see if she wants to, to drink from the squeeze bottle. Now this is, you know, I haven't had her back for a while. So we'll see. Huh? You want to drink, baby? Huh? No? Huh? What's up? Now she's the traditional slate gray you know, dark gray coal color uh, mambas of the south regions of Africa, unlike uh, our Tanzanian friends, which are yellowish. I know, I see you shifting your head side to side. Huh? Yeah, I see. Yeah. You want to try another drink, huh? Hmm? Yeah, there we go. 
doesn't know quite what to make of that. Another touch of water, huh? Okay. See? That's not gonna hurt ya. That's not gonna hurt ya. Oh, that's okay. It's okay. I know, I see you coming towards the door. I know. Want to try some more water? Huh? Not used to that, huh? You want me to back off? You want to try to come out? Let me uh, try to do something that uh, I've not done in a while for you guys. Uh, let's uh, try Mamba on a stick. Come on, girly. Come on, you're good. You're good. You're good. Okay. Well, here's the Dendrapsis polylepis, the uh, gal that was uh, I've had for over a year now, but was off uh, you know, training other herpers how to work mambas. And since she's, you're okay, you're okay. Since she's relatively calm, at least at the moment, we can. Uh, Put her out here on the stick for all to see. Now, come on, don't take the hook away from me. It's a little tough for me to. No, come on, you just stay put. It's a little tough for me to see the video. And of course, I, I can't really pay much attention to the video because I have to pay attention to uh, the mamba. Oh, I hate when your nose itches while you're handling a mamba like this. That's, uh, it can be a problem. So, at any rate, uh, she's born and bred in uh, South Africa and was sent uh, to me along with uh, a care package uh, from a friend down there. And we have a, a nice uh, trading uh, arrangement where I send things that. Uh, he can't normally get and I pay the freight over and then he uh, he sends me goodies like this girl and other neat things uh, and he pays the freight for the way back uh, no money is really exchanged hands just goodwill and very cool animals so that works for, for everybody And as you can see, with the exception of the moment here where she's crawling up on my hand, um, she's quite relaxed. Not the uh, lethal threat uh, that most people will have you. 
you know, I keep telling people that if you don't... Okay, you're getting a little too close there, sweetheart. If you don't do something to scare the mamba, the mamba won't do anything to scare you either. So that's why we try to move uh, in a very deliberate, slow fashion uh, so there's no misunderstandings. Now I could probably do the same thing with Taz, except Taz uh, weighs a whole lot and would take me a... Oops! I'm sorry, I moved because I had to scratch my nose again, damn it. Um, wait, she weighs a whole lot and therefore you know, for me to hold her steady and to keep that eight or nine feet under control is a little difficult. Now, if I grab this little girl by the tail, uh, she would not uh, react uh, so politely. Just like any uh, girl, if you grab her tail and uh, uh, she most of the time does not uh, react in a very positive fashion uh, unless of course she's your girl and uh, she doesn't mind you uh, touching her there uh, but uh, the same principle applies with snakes you know you lay your hands on them uh, first of all your hands closing around their body makes them feel like it's a big mouth closing around their midsection. Now folks, I can't help it if this is not focused uh, perfectly on her uh, because I'm way back here at the other end of the stick. Um, you know, they feel that big set of jaws closing around their, their back or their tail and that causes them to panic. Furthermore, your hands are very warm. Uh, right now the room temperature is 80 degrees. I'm sorry, 74 degrees. So she's somewhat cool. You know, subsequently, if you, uh, if I lay my 98 degree hands on her backside, uh, she will, uh, uh, that will be rather warm uh, to her. And, uh, you know, snakes are okay with the heat and warm up to a point, but. If you want to kill a snake, uh, he is the fastest way to do it. You can cook them in no time flat, five minutes or less, under the right condition. Subsequently, uh, you know, that's a bit of a, a shock to them. It's not so much of a problem when they have a big uh, body mass, like a big gaboon and you grab them by the tail. Yeah, they feel the warmth, but it's not going to alter their overall temperature uh, too rapidly. So as you can see this highly lethal, highly mobile uh, uh, black mamba is uh, a very nice uh, animal that uh, is relatively calm and uh, pretty kicked back. Doesn't seem to, uh, to mind uh, being manipulated. Are you looking at Taz? Is that what you're doing? You're staring intently at Taz. Um, so, all right. Well, that's pretty much it for Mamba on a stick. So, I'm going to put her back in her enclosure. There you go, baby. She just glides right off the hook back into her enclosure. Go on. Good girl. Good girl. Okay, there you go. Hi! Yeah, you're poking your nose out this end. I know that's a little small for you, but that's what I got for you right now. But at least you can uh, uh, climb up and, and sun yourself. And you got a branch to hang on. There you go. And see? She's all uh, back and relaxed in her enclosure. You know, and for the most part, you know, she can, uh, she's pretty relaxed. She's a little frightened of the camera. See that little nervous tongue flick? Here, let's focus. That's better. Okay, and a little, a little bit of neck flare. 
Cameras can be a little frightening to these guys because they, they think it's a big eye and there's a face staring at them and, you know, they perceive that as a threat. So we'll let, uh, we'll sort of bow the camera to her and let her tongue taste it. See? It's okay. See, it's okay. There we go. See, this would be a, you know, a perfect zoo animal because uh, if they continued to treat her nicely like this, uh, uh, she would continue to be a nice, uh, nice mamba. But in order to keep them used to you working with them, you have to actually work with them. So, you know, it's a two-way street. And there, there are risks inherent in this field and... Uh, once again, society thinks that everything should ha carry no risk at all, that everything should be uh, hunky-dory and, and no, no one who pushes the envelope should get hurt. You know, it just brings to mind the craziness with our space program here. You know, going into space is a very dangerous uh, uh, proposition and for years and years uh, American uh, pilots and stuff, that was the ultimate dream. You know, these people realize the risks. These people like to uh, gamble and push the odds. Uh, but now all of a sudden it's too dangerous. You know, with the two catastrophes that we have with the shuttles, um, statistically it had to happen. You know, are you know were mistakes made yes you fix those mistakes and you carry on you don't uh, abandon the situation just because you think it's dangerous uh, I'm sure those people knowing the end result if they had the opportunity to get off the space shuttle before uh, hand I bet they would all uh, go through with it You know, just like uh, handling venomous snakes. I know what the risks are. I know I could get bit. I know I could die. Uh, those are all acceptable risks. Uh, certainly none of those things uh, I want to happen. Uh, but things do happen uh, and it's par all part of life. So, oh, we're going to relax a little bit now, huh? Okay. All right, well... She's going to be feeding here shortly, so we'll, let's let her uh, kick back for a few minutes.